Welcome to Talking Politics. I am Paul Gable. And here my, I'm here with my friend and co-host John Bond Sr. It's cold today, man. And today we are like entertaining Robert Edge, the Horry County coroner. We'll be back in a moment. County Coroner Robert Edge and and uh, Robert, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, time out. Huh? One second, Robert. Why are you wearing uh, short sleeves? It's so cold out there. How come, Robert? I guess I'm hot. What are you doing you. here? I'm hot. Nature. What are you doing to me, uh, uh, Robert? I'm, I'm not a cadaver. I'm, 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 I'm cold. North. I'm used to cold weather. It's hot down here. Uh, well, now, Robert, the coroner's office is one of the uh, uh, countywide elected offices, and it's probably one that all of us like to think of very little because of what you do. But you've been in, in office how long now? Uh, approximately 28, 29 years. I was thinking, I, I, wow. I've been down here 30, um, 34, and I don't remember a time when Robert Edge was not the coroner. That's, of course, my long-term memory sometimes is gone, but it's you've been around a long time, and you've seen a lot of the changes and had to, had to work into the office, the, the, the but it, but his father was a mayor of North Myrtle Beach. Well, the Edge family goes yeah, back. Yeah, they go way back. Way your brother back uh, Tracy Horry was County. a uh, state rep, right? Wasn't yes, he? he was state rep. And then your, your brother was North, a policeman in North County, County Police. City, so they, they're really into government uh, heavily here. Have, the and, and the Edge and, family goes back into the oh, I mean back into the 1600s. But right? what they the say that uh, Edge and Horry County, the premier coroner's office in the state of South Carolina, uh, that's. Uh, that's what everybody is saying. Uh, you go to Horry County, oh, that's Edge. See, everybody knows Edge. If you go down to Columbus County, you don't know who they Give who us the an overview of what the Edge. office does, Robert, right. please. Aren't you wonderful? Going back to the old days, I think we're all cousins. We just don't, <laughs> don't know that some of our cousins. <laughs> Your cousins. Yeah, normally people don't think about the coroner's office or they don't want to, to really have a lot to do with it because when we're called, it's, it's a death that has occurred. It's a time of emotional sadness. And we respond to all deaths that occur in homes with the exception of hospice calls, where they're under hospice. We respond to the emergency rooms in the hospitals, uh, car accidents, anything that is not of a natural nature. Hangings. Suicide. Right. You got a lot of suicide coming. And, and, and right now, we're going through a, a heroin drug overdose oh, yeah. period of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, when I started back in 1989, I probably didn't average a half a call a day per year. Wow. And today, we'll do close to 1,200 calls. So you're doing... I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, 2,000. I have my mind messed up. Wow. 2,000 calls. We'll, we'll, we'll do close to 2,000 calls this year. So you're doing from a half a call a day to six calls a day on the average in, 20, in, in a time years. of year in, in a time of year uh, holding the, the corn yes. wow and, and back when I first started I did it all it was it was it was not hard but today I have four deputies and we really, we do shifts uh, and two on each shift and they stay they stay real busy with all this going on do you have any inquests and, do you ever have a, a, assemble an inquest uh, for deaths and so forth? You know, that, that used to be a prominent thing a long time ago. They'd have coroner's inquests on the scenes. But I think the last few inquests, that's probably been 15 years ago. 15? Were, wow. were more family problems that where families were had different opinions about things, and it's more of a, 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 learning, a learning episode than... You know, determine the manner the, the manner of death. Well, how did you handle a baby Ori? Uh, where they found the, the little baby in, in a uh, compactor, garbage compactor. You, that, you you have a burial site for them over at uh, what five uh, Hill, uh, Hillcrest Cemetery? Huh? Yeah, Hillcrest Cemetery on five forty four. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's very. Well, didn't you want any questions to see how, what happened to the baby? How how did it die and things of that nature? Well, I mean, it today, was abandoned. Yes, we know that. Today we do autopsies. 30, 40 years ago, you did. You very seldom ever did an autopsy, and, and that autopsy would Is tell right? us what caused oh. the, the child or the person to die. Uh -huh. And then we have to make a decision on the manner of death. And, and this, in this particular one, uh, the child would have been a very 
viable child if it had some medical attention. But uh, I think the cold, the coldness is what killed the child. Uh huh. Uh, it was hypothermia. It was yes, died sir. of hypothermia. Okay. Uh, well, you have a ceremony every year. What is it? December first, December second, December fourth, and uh, with the help of Rolling Thunder, we've continued to carry this on. This has been the ninth year. Ninth year. And, and our hopes are that maybe one day somebody will will see it. Maybe somebody's conscience will bother them a little bit. Yeah, they'll come and tell us what happened and maybe who the, who the parents are, at least one parent. And, uh, yeah, that's and, and we, we try to keep this name alive and in front of the public as much as we can. Uh -huh. and, and, and as we talk about Baby Ori, we had another incident a couple years ago where a let, child... Let me ask you if you will, hold that thought a minute. It's okay. time for us to take a break, Robert, and we'll come back and you can pick up where we left off. All right. We'll be back in a moment. My name is Angelo Antonucci, and I'd like to welcome you to my restaurant. I've been in Myrtle Beach now for over 30 years, and we are the home of the greatest steaks in the universe. Here at Angelo's, we have a fantastic Italian buffet with your favorite pastas served with meatballs and sausage and delicious gourmet pizzas. But where we really shine is our entrees like our scampi traditional, Alfredo or lemon romano served over linguine, our French pork chops with garlic mashed potatoes, and our twin fillets featuring our signature marsala sauce. It's a great place to enjoy with family and friends, so stop by and see us at our new location at the corner of 24th Avenue South and South Kings Highway. Don't just take my word for it. Come in and try Angelo's, home of the greatest steaks in the universe. Striving for excellence is what we all do. After 10,000 hours of practice and preparation, we become experts at our crafts. Our skills become a manifestation of our talents, and our service becomes sought after. We are the professionals, taking care of the details. The professionals, mobile detailing and car cleaning specialist, taking pride in what we do so you can take pride in what we do for you. Welcome back. We're, we're talking to Horry County Arner, or Coroner Robert Edge, and you had ta told us about Baby Ori and the ceremony that you have, and then you wanted to mention another thing that you have done. So if you can take pick up right well, there. About three years ago, uh, there was an incident over in the Socrates area where this uh, young lady had a child with her, and the child drowned in a, in a swollen oh, creek. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that is uh, Baby Grace. And uh, so... Since they were so close in dates, date of deaths, we ceremony, we celebrate Baby Grace and Baby Ori's going to the Lord all at one time, both of them together. And uh, Reverend Wayne Brown is our minister. He comes out and helps us every year, and we have a nice little funeral service. There's a lady who comes who's written a song for Baby Grace, and, wow. and our goal is again to keep his keep his mind and, and everybody, his his thoughts in everybody's mind. And hopefully one day we'll find out what what really happened. Why was he put out in the woods and left by himself? You know, wow. we have a lot of homeless here in uh, Horry County. When they die, they have no place to go. We just had uh, a lady from Save Our Cats. Uh, Save Our Cats, Paul, any comment? Have to get in it every right, week. Yeah. Uh, she, you know, that lady that died from Save Our Cats, she had nobody to claim her body and, and the like. And you have a, a little problem, don't you, with respect to uh, people that die and nobody claims their bodies? Where do you put the bodies? We uh, normally. I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's something that the, you, you've been uh, crying for for the county to do something about. Well, There's no mortuary or anything like that. No, right? sir. We uh, we have we have those persons cremated. And about a year ago, we had a, a burial over at the Rose Hill Cemetery in Conway, 
We interred 73 people. 73, wow. Um, at one time, and uh, we have recently had a marker put up with their names on it. And it's a very uh -huh. nice marker, uh, and it's a nice city cemetery. It's owned by the city of Conway. And the city of Conway was very helpful and instrumental in that, that happening. But not to get people frightened out there that you don't do enough to try to claim the bodies. You do that, right? You, when a person yeah. dies that are homeless, you, you try to find an extra kin before you put them uh, into the ground or so. Whatever. Yes, sir, we, we have some search engines, and, and today with computers, we're able to go on there and we have a date of birth and a social security number. Lots of times we can locate families. And then unfortunately there are a few that we are not able to locate. Uh, do you bury them or do you, or, or, or do you uh, bring them over to the crematorium? Well, we have, we, we, have pre, we have them cremated and we bury the ashes. Well, who makes the determination whether it's a cremated or it's a burial? Uh, the coroner's office does. You do? And, yes, sir. And, uh, I, I guess the reason we cremate them, there are two reasons. Uh, it's more economical, and uh, it, we don't have to go out and purchase a grave space and, and a, a casket and all the stuff that goes along with a normal burial. It's, it's a little more economical to cremate them, but then we, we inter the ashes. But here's the thing. I mean, these are people that have died, that you have attempted to find somebody to claim the, the remains. You've been unsuccessful on that. So, I mean, you have to take, at, at some point, you have to take the economical way out of this thing. But yes. if you're listening, if you're looking at this show here, and, and, and you're listening and you're, and you're hearing what I say, the questions are going to arise. Well, how do they make a determination, one, how the burial, number two, how do they extend themselves in, in, in reaching the next of kin? So that's something that the people out there want to know, and he's right here, he can explain it to them. Well, we try to have, we have a rule that we try to go by as much as possible. You know, if there's family around, then we don't get involved. Sure. And it's mainly unclaimed people or people who, who are unclaimed that don't have any family around that we take charge and do the cremation. How, how long would you hold the remains before the cremation would occur? If there is a, 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 a pat, you know, a standard amount of time or something. If, if they are not identified, state law says we cannot cremate them. We have to, have to retain them. And uh, we have one gentleman who's an African-American gentleman who was found at a local resort up in the North End. We've had him a year. There was a lady who uh, drowned in uh, Myrtle, Myrtle Beach about four years ago. And uh, the TV station, Channel 10, kept running the spot. And uh, a lady in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, saw it one day and recognized her, her photo. And there was a tattoo on her leg of a dolphin. And we were very fortunate that she called us and we located a family who lived in Raleigh. So, you know, a lot of these people could have, have family 150, 200 miles away. We just are not able to find them, mm -hmm. even, that, even that close. But, uh, but we, we make the decision as to the, what the, uh, the, the final rest of but, I, but, I, but I, you I, have to identify I, it. I, I, if you've identified it <laughs> and you've not been able to find any others, then it falls to you to... The handle the remains. Yes, gotcha. and, and the state law puts that, that responsibility on the uh, county. I was going to tell you, Robert, I have something free, a free coffee here. It's well, cold out there. You're, you're shivering. I can feel well, your, your skin shivering. Yeah. I got a nice cup of coffee, the best uh, coffee. It's free, Robert. Would you uh, like a coffee, Robert? Uh, John, uh, hold on a second. Wait a second minute. Would you like a coffee, uh, Robert? I'd rather have a, a banana split or chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in a moment. It's time to take a break for our sponsors. Located at 1300 Highway 544 near Coastal Carolina University, Soho 544 is an area's favorite for sushi, hibachi, American and Asian fusion cuisine. Soho 544 also offers daily happy hour special for only $5, as well as some of the lowest beer and liquor prices along the Grand Strand. So don't wait, come and join us. Soho 544 also caters to large parties and special events. At Surfside Cafe and Creamery, we pride ourselves on serving you the best there is. Our breakfast and lunch menus feature Boar's Head products. And how about starting your day with one of our signature coffee blends from Charleston Coffee Roasters. Surfside Cafe and Creamery has something for every taste, including the best ice cream on the Grand Strand. You gotta taste it to believe it. Surfside Cafe and Creamery, 1611 Highway 17, Surfside Beach.
Well, thank you for coming back. We are at the uh, Surfside Cafe and Creamery at Highway 17 North and Surfside Beach. And John keeps talking about the coffee, and he's right. But I think Robert hit the key. Oh, well, look, it's nice and hot. The, the, coffee nice and hot is, coffee. the coffee is excellent, but the ice cream is it excellent, says, too. Says, and Robert wants to have a banana It says free split. coffee. Look, free <laughs> coffee. You come here for free coffee, so I'm offering you free coffee. But if you want a banana split, that's going to cost you $3. Well, who can be? We will. <laughs> that's all I can say. But okay. let, let's go back. We, we talked a little bit in the beginning about the heroin problem and, and, and the increased problem that's caused for in, in law enforcement agencies, emergencies, you guys. What, what are you seeing in that? How, I, Over the last roughly three and a half years, we've seen a tremendous increase. And to start with, the numbers were increasing maybe 10 or 12 a year, but the last three years, they've gone up like 20 to 25 a year. Uh, back years ago, we had pain clinics and people went to doctors and they wrote them some prescriptions for uh, things like hydrocodone and, and maybe some stronger drugs. And we had a few over, overdoses then, but today, since uh, those prescriptions are harder to get, people are going to, to heroin. It's easier to buy, uh, maybe a little cheaper in some cases. And, and when I say easy, you just have to know where to go to to get it. There are people who sell it everywhere. You don't have to get the prescription and all that. You just That's go see right. the street corner dealer, right? Yes, sir. And, and I really think that maybe what's occurring, when we're doing our drug screens, we're finding that there are other, other chemicals mixed in it, such as fentanyl that's probably made in somebody's kitchen somewhere, not, not pharmaceutical brand stuff. And I think this, this addition of these extra drugs or chemicals in the, the heroin is what's causing a lot of our deaths. And, and then we have some where people who have um, been off heroin for a while and for some reason another peer pressure, they take, they take a, a shot or an injection as you want, may want to call it, and their system is not accustomed to it, and it's more than they can handle. But it is truly a problem, and you know, everybody says, well, they're just, I hate to say this, just bums or street people, but it's, it's kind of like a person that I'm overweight, a person who has an overweight problem, it's, it's something that's hard to control. You have that desire for something, and you know it's not good for you, but you still give in. Well, well and, and let's go back a minute. You're, I, I would say <clears throat> you talk about street people and what have you, but you're, you're picking well, up from all areas of, of the community, all, all economic areas and social areas and what have you, right? Yes, sir, that's probably a mistake I just made. Uh, in, in, in our day, daily operations, we go to people who live in million dollar houses and we go to people who live in very economical small houses. It's, it's not just, it's just not one segment of people. And you go to it's, tents? It's black, white. Rich, it, poor. Rich, yeah. poor. <clears throat> you, you know, the, it, it uh, makes, there's no discrimination in it. Robert, what is the hardest part of your job? What would you say is the hardest part that you have to deal with? The hardest part, uh, in my opinion, is having to deal with children, uh, maybe who died, who passed away at birth, or who, who were in car accidents, or things like that. And as I mentioned about Baby Ori, you know, you and I, we're, we're, we've enjoyed a good life. These children who die young at birth, four, five, six, ten years old from accidents, you know, they're, they're cut short. They, they will not never enjoy the things that you and I have enjoyed. That's true. Uh, and, 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 and the next part So that is, hits you really hard then. Yes, sir. Is that it? Uh -huh. uh, I've, I've caught myself crying. You ever cry? I have sometimes. You have cried. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. But, and, then, and then the next part is the parents and the family that's left. You know, they've, got, they've had a loss. They've had a little baby they loved. And for some unknown reason, it left us, and, and they're at they're at a loss. They don't know what to do. Uh, it's, that's that's the hardest part. Uh, how, how do you, you get over you? that kind of thing, Robert? Well, or not get over it, but deal with I it. I don't know I guess. that you get over it, but I I think that uh, that we have to keep the faith, and and we're taught that that's that's the plan, and we have to to deal with it and make the best as we can out of it. And, and you know, there's an old saying, one door shuts, another opens up. I don't know that that's a good scenario or a good comparison, but we just have to accept it and then, and then do what we can to make things better for, the, for, say, for the next child or the next baby or the next child that's in an accident. 
When you go to a crime scene, Robert, uh, and uh, you're the one that's responsible for releasing the body, is that correct? Yes, sir. But what happens if the police don't want the body released because they have some investigation to do? What do you do in a case like that? Well, we, do you, we, do you hold we, it off and they have to come back and release it, or just we, what do we, you do? We work together. It's, it's, a, it's, a, code, it's a code deal there. Uh, in Horry County, and I think we have a real good system, uh, whether it's Surfside or Myrtle Beach or Horry County or North Myrtle, they have a crime scene unit and they come in and do the crime scenes and once they're, we're through with what they need to do, then we take possession of the remains. And uh, how, long, how long are you allowed to keep the body there? Well, I mean, people un, are, under, under extreme circumstances, we could keep it as long as we need to. Uh, it would have to well, be... What, what is extreme? Like what? An, uh, a well, day maybe a, maybe a week or something. One like week that. at the scene? No, not at the scene. We'll move. We'll well, move I'm, from the I'm scene. saying they're releasing the body. Well, but there's a little break there in what you're asking. Maybe what I'm telling you. Once they complete that crime scene, we move the body to a, a hospital for forensic autopsy. And but you so, release and, it then. But then after that, we normally release it. Okay, you let them do their work first. You're talking and about then you'll a day, come back. And then we release it. Okay, but, but you ultimately have to release the body. Yes, sir. That cannot be released by anybody else but the coroner's office. Yes, Is that sir. correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, when, when I first started, there, and I'll tell you about one answer, there was a child who fell down a flight of steps, and Dr. Proctor was not with us in, so we sent the, the child to Charleston for an autopsy. Well, Dr. Karate calls back and says, I want to look at that baby again. So we had to put things in the hole and, and go back to Charleston for that second that second opinion. And, and normally that's a day or two, but under normal circumstances, once the autopsy is completed, then we release the remains. And I think it's important to mention here that you are the Horry County coroner and you're dealing inside municipalities, Surfside, Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach, as well as un unincorporated. I mean, you're throughout the whole county that you're you're handling all those scenes for. Yes, sir. And, uh, and some people say, well, you know, they don't get along, but you would be surprised that there is a lot of cooperation from the municipality to the county and vice versa, back and forth. There's, it's kind of like a family. They all work together. And if uh, North Myrtle Beach needs something that the county has, they call and they come. Same thing for Surfside, vice versa. So everybody works together because we have one goal in mind. If it's if it's a homicide, we want to find out who did it. We want to document it, and we want to prepare it so that the solicitor has a number one type case for prosecution. Well, and, that's, and that's our goal. It's time for us to take one more break. We'll be back again in a moment. <clears throat> Located at 1300 Highway 544 near Coastal Carolina University, Soho 544 is an area's favorite for sushi, hibachi, American and Asian fusion cuisine. Soho 544 also offers daily happy hour special for only $5, as well as some of the lowest beer and liquor prices along the Grand Strand. So don't wait. Come and join us. Soho 544 also caters to large parties and special events. At Surfside Cafe and Creamery, we pride ourselves on serving you the best there is. Our breakfast and lunch menus feature Boar's Head products. And how about starting your day with one of our signature coffee blends from Charleston Coffee Roasters. Surfside Cafe and Creamery has something for every taste, including the best ice cream on the Grand Strand. You got to taste it to believe it. Surfside Cafe and Creamery, 1611 Highway 17, Surfside Beach. Welcome back. 
We're talking with Horry County Coroner Robert Edge at the uh, Surfside Cafe and Creamery in Surfside Beach. And uh, John, you had a best co good coffee. Free you coffee. Free coffee. <laughs> free coffee. John, John sold on your coffee. I'm waiting on my. Oh, well, well, you know, Robert, you have a you have a lot of problems that I, I mean that, that, that the, the coroner's office has to take care of. Uh, those that are uh, mysteries uh, that you have to go out there and look at the body. Uh, you have to release it. You have to get the, the uh, forensics to come in and, and the like. But didn't you have a, a case recently where uh, they had they found a body in the woods or so, and uh, it was very difficult to determine what the cause of the death was? Because you you actually have to make the cause of the death as well, don't you? Yeah. Yes, we So shall. how can you really say that? Here's a body that you find that it's probably a skeleton. More or less, uh, there's, a, there's very, very little cells and flesh and what have you, and then you come onto the scene. You have to hold your nose. You have to put some aldehyde on because of the smell, stench, and and there you are, Robert, uh, looking at that body. And what do you? What's the first thing you think of? Well, we, we wonder how he got there and, and what happened to him. Uh, and well, you make that determination, or you you, you coordinate it with? <laughs> Paul is vomiting here. What did I say, Paul? <laughs> you know, Paul well, can't take it anymore. <laughs> you don't have to be quite as descriptive well, here. I mean, I mean that's what he has to face. <laughs> Let's face it. This is a tough job. It's not an easy job. Everybody thinks the coroner's officers go there to get a scene and says, okay, the, the person's dead, they, this is the cause, etc. But there are other instances it's not where that he, simple, he has to go Rob out there and use all of his skills to determine what caused the person to be in this condition. Is that correct? Am I talking for you? Or you want to explain it yourself? Well, let me give you two examples. Okay, uh, that's good. And over the years, we've had a, a right a many of those to occur. I think it was over the year, uh, I entered here in the last year or so, we found a remains uh, that was just pretty much skeletonized. All, all the tissue was gone. Uh huh. In, the, in these particular cases, we'll gather, we'll gather the bones that are left. We'll send them to an anthropologist, and she will examine them. And what she's looking for and let's just say, for instance, that uh, they were stabbed in the chest. We're looking for uh, deformities in the bones, maybe where a sharp instrument Nicks on the bones them. or that kind of thing? Yes, sir. Uh, and, and here again, you kind of have to use a little common sense, but if you find a rib, for instance, that's, uh, that's got a slash in it, like a saw or a cut mark, well, you can pretty well determine they died from a stab wound, most likely. But let's go to another situation that if we find someone who's in the woods and they've been there a week and a half, two weeks in the summertime, and there's a lot of decomp, but there's there's still some some tissue there, such as outer skin that's just hard to petrify. We look for stab marks, gunshot wounds. We X-ray all these people, uh, try to cover all the bases to what could have occurred to them. And then, and then we we've, we've had some, and one was recently here in, in Norry County where. A baby was killed, and uh, it was taken out to a wooded area and buried in a very shallow grave. How was it killed? I remember you reading remember? that. Yeah, that is that is one that I don't know that we can prove how we killed. We've been told how uh -huh. it was how it was killed at the hands of another, but we were able to gather some the majority of the bones. And here, here but when you sign a death certificate, what do you put as cause of death? Unknown. Uh, if if we really don't know, we put etiology unknown. Okay. But is there any, uh, any occasions where you disagree with maybe the autopsy findings? Uh, Were there ever a case that you disagree? Very few. Uh, very few. Yes, but sir. Those and, and, you, and you usually those, those are medical autopsies and not homicides. I see. Okay. I think we have to take a break. But look, the creamery gives free coffee. And guess what? It's from Charleston. The coffee bean is from Charleston. Free coffee. Come, Paul. Next time you come, have a free coffee. It's on me. <laughs> well, that, that's it for today. I want to thank Horry <laughs> County Coroner Robert Edge for, you, Robert. for being well, on our show. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. I'm, I'm going to get you. A, I'm going to get you a. What, what did you say you wanted again? And we want to. I'm we want to thank our hosts at the. You uh, wanted a cup of coffee. Okay. Coffee. No, no ice cream today. No, right. 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 We, we want to thank our hosts <laughs> at the Surfside <laughs> Cafe and Creamery for allowing us to here. And and the wonderful coffee that John keeps talking about. And here's the menu. Come on over. That's all for this week. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you.